G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last video. I'm really sorry about that. I've just been hosed with work. So I thought I'd get back into uh, things this week with a new series that um, I, I plan to add to. I won't be doing it every week, um, but it'll be a collection of, of uh, information that I've gathered uh, as I've gone through my own weight loss journey. And that is Mythbusters. Uh, in terms of the, the disinformation and bullshit that I've, I've discovered as bullshit as I've gone through my own weight loss journey, in the hopes that it will help dispel some myths for you. So uh, this week, we're gonna be talking about the fact that fat is not the enemy for weight loss, as the title says. Uh, but before we jump into that, I just wanted to say, if this is your first time joining us, thank you very much. Uh, you know, this, this channel is really dedicated to helping to motivate people uh, on their own weight loss journey by tracking mine, uh, it's my no bullshit approach to my personal weight loss journey, the things that I've found that work for me, uh, all the tips and tricks I pick up along the way for health, fitness, and weight loss. Um, so again, I release videos every Tuesday. Hit that subscribe button to get notifications when I release a new video. Uh, if you find this video useful, contains some new information that you hadn't heard before uh, and prompts you to go out there and do research because I'm a big believer in, in uh, you know researching uh, to get a better relationship with food, your body, health, and fitness. Um, then hit that like button and leave me a comment if you've got anything to say. So let's get into it. Let's start. I'm not going to go into a long history, um, but just a very brief, it's not going to be an X-Men origin story. Um, it's just a really brief history on where this all started. So there was a physiologist and a nutritionist named Ansel Keys who back in the 60s started to talk about a high fat diet causing uh, heart disease and obesity. Now, um, at the same time, there was another another scientist, uh, another nutritionist, nutritionist and physiologist who was countering that story by, by saying that his research showed that a high carbohydrate diet was actually responsible for obesity and cardiovascular heart disease. Um, now, Ansel Keys was backed up by the sugar industry. What we now know is that a lot of the studies that he used as evidence for his perspective and his studies were skewed and um, you know, corrupted essentially by the sugar industry. Uh, the sugar industry and Ansel Keys ran uh, smear campaigns against this, this other guy, John Yudkin, um, to basically discredit his body of work. Now, um, unfortunately, John Yudkin actually died in 94, 93, somewhere in there, um, you know, early to mid 90s. And he was essentially discredited as a scientist. Now, I say unfortunately, because we now know that John was right the whole time and that Ansel Keys was talking at his ass. He was skewing, skewing statistics. Um, you know, he was working with the sugar industry and supported by the sugar industry. And there was a lot of money changing hands um, to encourage him to enforce this idea in, you know, in the general population that fat is bad uh, and that low fat diets were crucial for health. Now, why support him? Why would the sugar industry be injecting money into him? Because when you go and buy low fat foods and you've only got to walk through any grocery store to see a plethora of low fat dietary foods that are supposed to be healthy for you, they take the fat out. Now, unfortunately, you know, for, for those foods, fat produces a lot of the tastiness, a lot of the quality of the foods that we eat. When you eat a steak, um, you know, a good quality Wagyu steak is given a marbling score. That marbling score is a reference to how much fat and the distribution of fat in that cut of steak. Why? Why is that important? Why is a high marbling score in a piece of Wagyu important? Bear with me, there is a point. Uh, when you cook that steak properly, that fat melts and the fat is where all of the flavor for that steak is. So as it melts, it permeates that flavor through the steak. You get a much higher quality steak. Same goes for a cake. If you eat a low fat cake, they take all the fat out of the cake. What do they replace it with? Refined carbohydrates. Now we know now that carbohydrates is actually what causes obesity and heart disease. Carbohydrates are the enemy, not fat. So we've established that and I think most people, um, anyone watching this channel probably already knows that you're much better off on a high fat diet than a low fat diet. Why? Because a high fat diet comes with low carbohydrates. A low fat diet encourages you to eat more carbs. Now the problem is a lot of those carbohydrates are coming from refined sources. Things that we've invented in the last century, century and a half, um, that our body did not evolve to recognize and process properly. Our body doesn't have a good physiological response to refined sugars because it's not a naturally occurring substance. Our body does, however, respond well to naturally occurring fats. So the other myth that comes with fat is the enemy and that you know eating fat causes you to be fat, which is absolute junk, carbohydrates 
overeating carbs causes you to be fat. The other myth that comes along with it is that saturated fats are particularly bad. Again, this is bullshit. Saturated fats occur naturally and are actually required by your body to produce optimum health. Optimum health. So we'll talk about dietary fat quickly. Why is it good for you? Well, dietary fats boost energy. They protect the immune system. I think I've talked about this before on the channel. Your brain is 60% fat and about half of that is saturated fat. The lining around your lungs that help you breathe, that lining is 100% saturated fats. Um, saturated fats also help support the um, hormone production, which as we've talked about on this channel before, hormones are crucial to weight loss, particularly in men where the hormone for weight loss is testosterone. Um, high fat diets promote faster metabolisms, whereas conversely, um, low fat, high carbohydrate diets spike insulin and actually lower your meta metabolism or slow it down. So just checking my, my quick shopping list of all the reasons why fats are good and carbohydrates are bad. I haven't forgotten anything. So as long as you're getting your saturated fats from natural sources like nuts and meats, um, particularly oily nuts, anything with omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, we've seen no studies with, you know, that show a direct and easily correlatable, um, you know, uh, sorry, easily identifiable correlation between high fat, high saturated fat diets and negative health effects. There are no negative health effects associated with saturated fat, as long as they're coming from a natural source. So there is one type of fat that you should avoid, and that's trans fats. <clears throat> Excuse me. Trans fats like cooking oils, the sorts of things that restaurants deep fry chips in. And the problem with the, the oil that they use when they're in deep fries is they continuously use the same oil over and over again. The reason why trans fats are bad for your diet is because over a certain temperature, they become unstable and they release toxins. They are bad for your health. So avoid prepackaged crap, you know, baked goods, deep fried goods. They're full of trans fats, they are bad. But in all other cases, as long as your foods are natural whole foods that come with natural saturated fats, a high fat, low carbohydrate diet is much better for you and will support weight loss. Whereas a low fat, high carb carbohydrate diet will actually you know, continue to contribute to the problem we've got with obesity. And you've only got to look at, at <clears throat> excuse me, look at grocery stores and think about it. For the last 50 years, We've had low fat foods jammed down our throats as being healthy. And yet in that same 50 years, the obesity epidemic in America, the obesity epidemic in Australia, across the world, the obesity epidemic epidemic has not only continued, but it's picked up in pace. So if we're supposedly eating foods that, you know, produce a diet that is healthy for us, that protect us from obesity and, you know, and cardiovascular heart disease in those low fat foods, and why the hell is obesity getting worse? Doesn't make any sense. So just to wrap up, you know, the best diet for weight loss is low carbohydrate or controlled carbohydrates. Don't avoid fats. I'm not saying you have to go on a high fat diet. Uh, you know, if you're bulking up, you want to build lean muscle, you actually need quite a lot of carbs. But stay away from refined carbohydrates, refined sugars. Stick to whole natural foods. Don't avoid fat. It's not the enemy for weight loss. Have a look at ketogenic diets. Have a look at paleo diets. They're very high fat diets that are very healthy for you if you do them properly. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about. These are short and punchy videos, just dispelling myths. That first myth, fat is not the enemy. So again, as I said earlier, uh, if you got some use out of this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to see videos that I release every Tuesday talking about my own personal weight loss journey and all the stuff that I pick up along the way that will hopefully motivate you to get up off that couch, stop procrastinating and get started with, with your own weight loss journey. Um, if you have any comments, uh, if you uh, wanted to ask me any questions or you found the, the, the video useful, please comment. I do reply to everything I see on YouTube. And otherwise, I will see you next Tuesday.